This is Eagle Al, and today I will be talking about is Monday Night Football cursed? Also, do we have the best duo defensive tackle in the league and Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis? And lastly, and lastly, the Eagles decide to sign a new cornerback. But does he solve the problems? But let's get straight into it. All right, like I said, let's get straight into it. It's Monday Night Football Cursed. It's Monday Night Football Cursed. All right, so these are the last four injuries in Monday Night Football. Kyler Murray tears his ACL. DeMar Hamlin going to cardiac arrest. Aaron Rodgers tear his Achilles. And lastly, Nick Chubb last night, gruesome leg injury. Like... NFL notification said is Monday night curse. I will say no. I will say absolutely not. Is every Sunday curse? Is every Thursday curse? And of course, is every Monday curse? Absolutely not. I just simply call it football. I simply call it football. Things happen, man. Things definitely happen. So you can just say every Sunday is curse. Everybody gets hurt. And those Monday night games, are those injuries gruesome? Absolutely. Absolutely. But when it comes to football, all you can really hope is if somebody get hurt, hopefully it's not that serious. Our bodies, our human bodies, not trying to get too scientific, scientifically on y'all, scientific guy, I ain't none of that type of stuff. If you have two people... Two, three hundred pounds hitting each other like that for four hours. <laughs> something bad is going to happen, man. I'm just saying something bad is possibly going to happen. So, again, all you can really hope for it. Uh, it's not long term. It doesn't affect them in their latter careers. And you just hope for the best, man. This is why these dudes get paid a lot of money, because literally their life is on the line. Some of these dudes may not even be able to walk the same, move the same. Hell, not even think the same because too many head injuries. And again, man, not trying to sound so cold hearted about it, but these things happen in football. Injuries happen to say a specific day or specific players or anything like that is cursed. I would say no, but things just happen. Like, hell, do you think I want to hear that Avanti Mattis is injured again? Absolutely not. But that's what comes with football. That's what comes with football, man. And all you can do is hope your team just keep going and keep going. And 80 to 90 percent of your team is healthy. Hell, even Jalen Hurts and Donovan McNabb was talking. Jalen Hurts going into the Super Bowl last year was 70 percent. Injuries happen. Best thing you can do is try to protect yourself as much as possible. Like if you could get out of bounds, get out of bounds. Um, Hopefully no dirty hit comes up. It it is football. That's all I can say. It is football. Now, prayers for Nick Chubb. I never seen the knee do that. And bad enough, it was the knee. I think he hurt in Georgia, too. So hearing that he's out for the season might be the best case scenario. That might be his best case scenario because the way, again, his knee bent back, he better hope he could play football again. Seriously, man. So, again, prayers up for Nick Chubb. Hopefully he get, you know, get it right, get his knee right, and we'll see him next year. All right, so let's get into the topics. The best duo, man, the best duo in football is Jalen Carter and Jordan freaking Davis. They the best duo, man. But let's go over the numbers right here. This are the grades. Defensive tackles through week two. You see number three and number four, Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis. Those two are on the same team. Now, again, with Jordan Davis, man, I don't hate him. I'm starting to build the love for him. I'm starting to see what Howie Roseman went with him. My only question about him was, can he get to the quarterback? Two weeks in, 
He sure he can do that. He could get pressure. He could get a sack. He could get half a sack. Because my thing with Jordan Davis was it's like if you're gonna draft that high, why would you draft a run a run stopper? But he's showing he can do it all. He can do it all. Jalen Carter is Jalen Carter, man. We all know he should have been the number one overall pick. Uh, due to media stuff, might have pushed the stop back, which helped us in the long run. So shout out to Jalen Carter. He's been nothing but a great player and great person in Philadelphia. So our defensive tackles is continued continuing to go up. And don't sleep on Fletcher Cox. Fletcher Cox is having a season. Fletcher Cox is having a season. Milton Williams is having a season. Having a season. But these two right now, to Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis, are sticking out like a sore thumb. They playing so well. We forgetting about Javon Hargrave. Oh, Javon Hargrave was with us last year? Cool. Cool. We we somewhat forgetting about him. That's no knock on his play. We still had to go get two defensive tackles from free agency because Fletcher Cox and Javon Hargrave were struggling to get the running backs. Now our run defense is damn near unstoppable. Now we can't stop the pass. So and which eventually is going to come up. I believe our pass defense will eventually get up there. But all in all, man. I think they are the best duo, and I think we got the best bench. We we take them out. Now you got to deal with Milton Williams and Fletcher Cox with fresh legs. It's too much. It's too much, man. We get that back end right. We're going to be straight. So, yes, I believe they're the best duo to have two two guys in the top five and and graded by PFF. That's That's really, really, really good. That is really, really, really good. All right. And I guess lastly, let's get into the last topic. I will say this about William Jackson. At least the Eagles are looking. I will say that. I will say that. I don't want to talk negative about the guy. He is working out with the Philadelphia Eagles due to lack of cornerback death. It's crazy going into the season. I'm like, yo, we kept that many corners and we got a corner on practice squad. Now you look like, dang, we lost. Avante Maddox. James Bradbury dealt with a concussion. Uh, Zach McPherson. You're like, dang, they they dropping. What? Reed Blankenship had to deal with some rib injuries. Like, man, out of all these defensive backs, of course, that's what we getting our bad juju from. Bad enough, our defensive backs are not the best. And that's where we get our bad juju in. Well, nickel anyway, nickel anyway, because we lost all our nickels. We we lost all our nickels. So luckily, James Bradbury is a guy that has been, you know, working in the slot. I think the Eagles thought ahead. No knock on Avante Mattis again. Prayers up for him, but we got to keep it real. He's going to get hurt. He's going to miss a game or two here and there every season. But this season was the blow. He might miss the whole season. So, again, I think he was possibly the best available guy out there. I, I think uh, Chris Harris is still out there, too. But Chris Harris wants to see as the season go on, see what team he could sign with. Because basically at this point in his career, he's ring chasing. I think week two will be too early for him. Sign him a little before the deadline, trade deadline. Maybe he'll come aboard depending on where we at. But right now, we got to work with what we can work with. And even William Jackson, he's an outside corner. He's an outside cornerback. So I guess we're really going to have Bradbury um, hybrid. I think he's just going to follow. If the number two try to work in the slot, I think he's going to follow him. And Job is just going to follow the number three if they're on the outside. We, we'll we see how that works. I want to see how that dynamic works because more than likely we're working with Job, Bradbury, and Slay, which I, I like. And again, Jackson seemed like a dead piece, to be honest. But I agree with Elliot Short parts where you had to say here. Jackson played mostly on the outside the last few seasons and did not have a good coverage grade on PFF. If Jackson is signed, could move Bradbury to the nickel, a role which he took some reps in the training camp, and Joe starts on the outside with Jackson as the backup. 
Hell, I don't even agree with Jackson as the primary backup. I would put Eli Ricks, even Makai Gardner. I like him as a dead piece, probably sitting on our practice squad or just buried in a death death chart. I, I don't think he's better than Ricks. I don't think he's better than Joe. And I don't think he's better than Makai Gardner. So my opinion, even Mario Goodrich, I don't I don't think he's better. Than, and then he doesn't even play Mario Goodrich position strictly nickel. He's an outside guy. So again, that piece Eagles are looking. You know, Nick Seriani came out with that phony baloney, like, yeah, we good with the pieces we got, but <laughs> next day you sign somebody. So, but hey man, what do you think and how do you feel about the news today? If more news come out a little later today, I'll put out a video of tonight. I'll put out a video. But this is Eagle Al. I'm a